Thank you very much, Jonathan. Matthew Collar here and joining us from Pro Football Focus is Mike Renner. And uh, Mike, I was listening to your podcast and uh, you, you just gave me a great idea for the show to have you on, Mike, which is taking players that might be interesting to the Vikings from their position and sort of their profile and having you tell me which one is better. Are you down? Uh, all in. Let's oh, do it. Okay. All right. So CJ Henderson is getting a lot of like huge buzz from the cornerback position. So, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't include him in this, but let, let's say just for comparison's sake, because people fall all the time, CJ Henderson versus Jeff Gladney versus Christian Fulton. Like which one of those guys should I like more and which is realistic for the Vikings? I think you should like Christian Fulton more. I, I think when he was in 2018, they played a lot more quarters at LSU. And again, I think the last time I was on, I talked about Mike Zimmer's sort of bread and butters, split field safety coverages, quarters, and other variations. Mm-hmm. That's been his MO. So uh, Fulton, that's when he was at his best. In off coverage, make plays on the football. Uh, he had the highest grade of any cornerback in the SEC that year. So uh, I think Fulton makes the most sense if he does fall there. Uh, Henderson, much more of a man corner. Gladney, good in his own right, would fit the system, but I'm not uh, – I just said Christian Fulton's just a better player, in my opinion. Okay, let's talk safeties. Do you like Antoine Winfield Jr. more for the Vikings or Xavier McKinney, assuming that they move on from Anthony Harris to create the cap space? Oof, that one's tough. I'll probably go with Xavier McKinney. Both are – both would be slam dunks in my mind in terms of – uh, fit in that scheme and what they bring to the table. Xavier McKinney, though, just a little more physical in my, in my eyes, can be a little more versatile. Now, they don't usually use their safety as a versatile role there in Minnesota, but I think you can provide a little bit more against the run. It's actually a very similar player to Harrison Smith there, which uh, might be a little redundant, but I don't think it's that's a bad thing to have two Harrison Smith. So uh, I, I'm a fan of his game. I'd probably go with David McKinney. Right. I was thinking the same thing. Anytime you bring up Harrison Smith's name, it's, uh, you can figure it out. I, I would trust Mike Zimmer yeah. enough to figure it out. And with your data and the draft guide, uh, I was just looking at how often he played in the slot. And it was a lot. I mean, he was playing there pretty regularly. Yep. And I think if you're the Vikings, what you want to have is even a situation where you could have three safeties on the field. They experimented with it with J. Ron Curse, but then J. Ron Curse kind of fell out of favor and just didn't get on the field a lot. But I, I, is that a new wave for like the next level? Because I feel like at the Combine, Mike, everybody was talking about who can be the Tyron Matthew who's moving all over the field, things like that, that Harrison Smith has done for quite some time. But it, it seems to me that McKinney and Winfield having that element in their game is hugely valuable over just a regular deep safety. Oh, I 100% agree. That's incredibly valuable. And that is the way the NFL is going. And you mentioned McKinney. He's uh, Isaiah Simmons got all the hype for his versatility. McKinney did literally the exact same thing in Alabama's defense this past year that played the exact same role basically that Isaiah Simmons did, but just isn't, you know, 238 pounds, but was similarly productive. Uh, I, I think that's the new, the reason it's not going anywhere and that versatility is going to be more coveted is because offenses are getting three wide receiver sets, four wide receiver mm-hmm. sets, five wide receiver sets are all pr- becoming more prevalent. You have to be able to match these trips and bunch sets with versatile guys, uh, you know, these motions and resets just because they come out and, you know, one formation doesn't mean they're going to be staying in that and have guys that can, you know, adjust without completely, you know, having to sub, bring in new personnel, that sort of thing. So a guy like Xavier McKinney, who, you know, in a pinch can fill in a linebacker and a pinch can fill in a slot corner and a pinch can go to safety and, you know, not be out of place in any of those situations is hugely valuable because then you have an answer for anything the offense wants to throw at you. It's sort of like the offensive version of having Kyle use check where like he lines up at wide receiver and it's just something that is comple- completely different. Right. You know? And so yeah. uh, there are very few of those guys and I've liked McKinney for the Vikings for that reason. Now let me throw you some wide receivers, T Higgins, Denzel Mims, or Justin Jefferson. Oof, gosh, of those. So to me, Jefferson is very much like Adam Thielen in, mm-hmm. in that where he wins. And so th- that can be redundant. Like you can't run those. You can't have two guys running the exact same kind of route tree. You need guys running you know, different stuff. So I'm not sure that fit is great. T Higgins, I actually like T Higgins a little bit better as a fit in that offense, provide something a little different. And I think he still can be a vertical threat. 
So I like that. Probably Mims, though, would make the most sense just in terms of he has 4 3 speed. That in and of itself can play in the NFL and in and of itself like can provide value and uh, you know take sort of eyeballs and take defense defenders off of Adam Thielen because you can't leave you can't leave a four six corner on a four three eight wide receiver. You just without help over the top, without something. Uh, so I, I do think that probably Denzel Mims of those three would be my pick. And at least theoretically when someone runs a sub four four and has amazing athleticism and bursts and things like that you could simplify it in the first year for them, at least in theory. We've seen people try to do this before and it's exploded in their face. But the Vikings talked about regretting not using Cordero Patterson more on reverses and bubble screens and things like that. It's just I don't know how good Denzel Mims is running after the catch, but it seems to stand to reason to me that if he goes bust, you might be able to find something for him to do to give you value, whereas an outside receiver, it's either going to work or it doesn't. Yeah, and that's kind of the whole point about the speed is that four three eight kind of has value. Like I said, you you have to just schematically defense the way they have to match up. So you can't leave a slow corner on a guy like that. If he's you know barreling down at your safeties, you're in a bad spot if you keep him up free release down there. So uh, that in and of itself has value. Whereas uh, someone like someone like a like a T Higgins, just to compare on the outside, doesn't have that level of speed. You're not going to throw him screens. You're not going to give him end rounds. You're not going to, you know, teams aren't going to have to worry uh, about, you know, leaving a slower cornerback on the T Higgins. All right. I have to ask you about offensive linemen. That was my tease because Vikings fans are obsessed with offensive line and they should be the way that the pass protection <laughs> has played out the last few years. Josh Jones, Austin Jackson, Ezra Cleveland. Oh, Josh Jones in a heartbeat. He's just, he's done it. The man has pass protected at an elite level. Uh, now nah, I didn't get that it was at Houston, but he did face at least one draftable edge defender there in uh, Charlotte's uh, Alex Highsmith, I believe. Uh, was Charlotte. I, actually, I can't remember. It might have been Tulane. But uh, he, and then he went to the Senior Bowl and he had the highest uh, grade of any tackle there in the one on one. So I, I just think he's done it and is more NFL ready. And I think they could use some NFL ready players in that offensive line. Uh, you are right about that. So how how tough in it is it in your mind though for someone who did play at Houston? to be able to step in quickly because the Vikings have kind of a situation with Riley reef where he's an average player, but he takes up a lot of cap space. And I don't know if you've heard this, they don't have any cap space to deal with. Mm. If they could draft someone and plug them in right away and at least get average play, it's a huge win for them. But if the guy's in over his head, then, you know, we know that Kirk cousins is not making up for any poor tackle play. Yeah. So it will be a transition, but the thing is, like, even if you are in the SEC and, and you're blocking against defenders like that, there's only, only going to face two draftable guys a year. Like, you're not going to face game in, game out. You're not facing a ton of talent. Like, that's just, that is the way of edge rushers in college football. There's not a lot of good ones. And yep. when you're not good, when you don't have it, like, they're all kind of similar in terms of, like, being able to beat them. So he completely manhandled them and then, the senior bowl facing guys who will play in the NFL it does make you feel more comfortable when he dominates there. Talking with Mike Renner, the lead draft analyst for pro football focus. The two for one podcast is a must listen this time of year. Uh, I have to say now, uh, Mike, uh, I'm looking at sort of the, the bigger landscape here of wide receivers. And there are so many options. Uh, if the Vikings decided to go cornerback and offensive tackle, they'd be in good shape in the first round uh, and take a wide receiver in the second, because there's a lot of talented players there. But the guy that I just can't seem to pin down who you talk about a lot in your podcast is really liking is Tyler Johnson. And I don't recall if we talked about this before because we've been talking draft for a really long time now, but you really like, Tyler Johnson of Minnesota and have for quite some time, but there just is a confusing buzz about him. There's some people that say you have character issues, but no one has really been specific about what those issues are. His production's incredible, but I also have no idea what his athleticism is because he didn't go to the combine and then his pro day was canceled because of coronavirus. So what is your feel on Tyler Johnson's draft value and could he be a steal in the late round? Yeah, he's a top 50 player for us because Athleticism be damned, he gets open. Like the guy has route running chops. He's done it back to back seasons, you know, in the Big Ten with 
I mean, like they were, everyone was keying on him not this past year, but at least the year before that, and he still produced. Like he was their guy. Uh, has showed showed a lot better hands this past season. Makes a lot of contested catches. It's a physical guy. There's a lot to like besides maybe high end athleticism is probably the only real major weakness at, at this point for him. So I don't get the sort of hate in the off field. I, I wonder if there is something odd looming there that people are down him for that no one really wants to disclose. But to me, he's a second round type of player. And, but the more I hear, it sounds like he's going to go on day three at some point. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, every draft sim that anyone ever does has Tyler Johnson in it. And I can't blame them. I, I can't blame Vikings fans yeah. for 